is the famous gazebo from The Truman Show, where he starts. <laughs> Somebody help me! I'm being spontaneous! <laughs> Driving in circles and going crazy trying to get out of the neighborhood. Truman! Truman, I think I'm gonna throw up! This and the one next door, the yellow one, the red one and the yellow one, are the two original uh, cottages in Seaside. Uh, we give the full story in our first Seaside episode if you want to go back and watch that one. Where are we going today, baby? Seaside. Yeah. I'm excited about breakfast. Today on 30A Misfits, we'll be touring Seaside. We start off with an awesome breakfast. What'd you just say to me, Erica? The ginger shot messed me up. <laughs> that ends up causing a bit of a bump in our plans. My tummy does not feel so hot. <laughs> As you can see, I am wearing different clothes. Come back on another day with a bonus guest. Chicken! Check out an enormous sundial in a hidden park. Pretty cool. Have a barbecue lunch on Airstream Row. I'm starving. You hungry? Okay. What? And discover what might be our new favorite dessert. <laughs> oh, wow. Before going on an all access tour of Seaside's beaches. I'm Erica, and this is David, and we are 30A Misfits, two transplant locals who love to adventure. Come explore with us. Chef Jim Shirley opened Great Southern Cafe in 2006, in the same spot it occupies today. Great Southern relies heavily on local produce from nearby farms and fresh seafood straight from the Gulf for its mix of international cuisines with Southern cooking. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. This is a ginger shot. I don't recall exactly what's in it. No alcohol. Right. But yeah. a bunch of other stuff. Yes. So, I will put right here in front of his face all the ingredients when I find them. Uh, but it smells like straight ginger. It smells like straight ginger. All right, you ready? The whole thing? Yes. Okay. Oh, that burns. Oh, that burns. Oh, it's a deep burn. Oh, that burns. Oh, that burns. That's so hot. <laughs> it was very hot. Whoa. My mouth is fire. Yeah. All right. I'm awake now. Smells for a good day. No, it's not good. The beignets are here. Woo -hoo. Try one. Oh, yeah. 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 Go ahead, baby. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. She just brought us some of the house-made hot sauce. It smells really good. It's excellent. Any chance you get to have grits and shrimp, do it. Yeah. It works. Great Southern has become a 30A staple in its 15 years here. And with food that good, it's easy to give them a perfect score.
Okay, we are taking a little potty break and then we are headed to the car to reorganize, get the backpack, and then we're headed to a giant sundial. What'd you just say to me, Erica? The ginger shot messed me up. <laughs> My tummy does not feel so hot. <laughs> the next day. So, as you can see, I am wearing different clothes. That ginger shot did not go over so well. So we are back on a different day. We're going to go back and check out that sundial where I can actually appreciate it. And then we're going to continue the day as we would have, right? Yeah. And bonus. Chicken! <laughs> All right, let's do this. A giant sundial isn't all there is to Natchez Park, but it's definitely the most impressive component. The park, designed by architect Charles Warren, is composed of architectural elements symbolizing the sun, including the sundial, two obelisks, and a ziggurat. A ziggurat is a structure which takes the form of a terraced pyramid, with a flat platform at its apex. The sundial can be read from the various vantage points in the park and from the upper floors of the nearby houses and also from the small scale dial at the base of the sundial to suggest the shift in scale from cosmic to human. The wooden ziggurat marks other intersections and the paired obelisks mark the endpoints of a trail of live oaks. The area beneath the oaks and the lawn of the sundial are the only sections of the park that are cultivated. All the rest is left to naturally occurring vegetation. Pretty cool. All right, so now it's time for lunch, right? Yes. Barefoot barbecue. To the barbecue! Barefoot barbecue! Barbecue! This is my spirit. I swear that it never fails. I'm starving. You hungry? So, Barefoot Barbecue uh, has some of the best mac and cheese that I have ever had at a barbecue place. Several different sauces, and they're all house made, are they not? They used to be. I'm not sure if they are. They used to be. For sure. We think they are. They definitely used to be. <laughs> so he got three pork sliders. What's what's in your little cup there? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese looks good. And I got the beef brisket sandwich platter. The mine comes with two sides and I got mac and cheese and uh, baked, baked beans. beans. And they did have four different sauces. And the sauce mama meat's just stays here forever if you dare to get it under your nails. Ooh, golly, okay. This one's a sweet traditional. This one's a vinegar based, mustard based, and a spicy. And they all have fancy names. I'll put them on the screen because I can't remember what they were. <laughs> okay, right, right, yeah, like one server this. Well, one's like, like hang ten, one's yeah. pipeline, right. lava, something. I'll put them on the screen so you can see them. All right, mm -hmm. this is the traditional. It's almost fruity. This is the vinegar. That is no joke. Mustard, which is usually my pick. And spicy. Why did I save this one for last? Ooh, personally, I would mix these two together, the mustard and the traditional, and that would make my perfect sauce. Look at that fat. Oh. How good the pork is makes me really excited to try the brisket. Ow. Don't just give my pickle to anybody. Mm. I don't know, it might be a tie. I really can't choose. Oh, look at that, wow. so much meat. Mm. Spicy? Not spicy, but peppery, green peppery. Yes. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, I, I forgot that. that. Remember that? Yeah, that but it's good. Mm. Barefoot Barbecue has some amazing food and will definitely be back, but their pricing pushes them more to the tourist end of the vibe meter. They may have a locals discount, but we forgot to ask. Wow, good stuff. 
All right, we have finished our barbecue lunch. Now you are gonna watch me go get a facial with Emma. TV magic. Okay, so I am here getting ready to go to the seaside spa. Hammy is babysitting the chicken. Chicken, chicken, boom, boom. Will there be enough room? Here comes H at the coconut tree. And Emma is going to meet me here and we'll have a girl spa day. The spa in Seaside has been around in some form or another since 2009, but the current owners have been here since the spring of 2021. They offer multiple facial and massage options from short and simple to full on luxury. We just happened to run into Angel in our season one Grayton tour, who at the time had just recently moved to Florida and started working at the spa. A build up. Beautiful glow. Okay. What? Let's go out here and see Emma's progress. She just got back from Colorado, has been on a plane with a one year old. Oh my god. So, got puked on on a plane. Oh, I didn't know that part. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That was fun, but that mm -hmm. was exactly what I needed. Right? Like, I feel like a new woman. Yeah. So, you said this place has been here for 12 years? Uh, 12 years, yes. And that you guys have been here for how long? For um, just about six months. Six months? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Feel good? I feel like a, a new million woman. Bucks. Right? Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Some more information or something, you want me to like sing a few songs for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. How about dessert? Well, I suppose there's time for dessert. When Bill Dawson built one of the original beachfront houses in Seaside, he agreed to open an ice cream shop for the soon-to-be-developed town. Dawson's Yogurt first opened its doors on July 4, 1988, and it's believed that they hold the longest record for a yogurt shop open and remaining in its original location in the entire country. We got ice cream! It's ice cream. How's the salted caramel? Good? Hammy got cotton candy, right? Yeah. I want yeah, well, let Hammy try it first. How is it? <laughs> I the best cotton candy I've found. Can I try it? I'm not usually a fan of cotton candy. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Can I try this one? <laughs> oh, wow. Probably nutty. Yeah. It's like complex. Uh oh. And then we got some fudge. And this is, they called it tiger butter. It's pretty good. I'm not usually a big fan of peanut butter in my fudge, but that's good. And then I couldn't resist. I saw a cotton candy fudge. When did you become a cotton candy mm. fan? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But I saw a cotton candy fudge, and how often do you see cotton candy fudge? really mild. <laughs> is that good, kid? Oh, wow. This is not too sweet. Right, and the same about the fudge. Usually cotton candy is way too sweet for me, and that's why I don't get it. But I thought in fudge, it wouldn't be terrible because I eat that in very small quantities anyway. But I could eat this whole block of fudge. Wow. I don't think I've ever eaten that much fudge in one sitting. And I could keep going. Thank 
I can't stop. I didn't get any of it. Back, wrap it up, <laughs> put it back, and then I have to ask. You ate the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> stop. It's like the buttercream on top of a cupcake. Solidified. And then somebody just handed you a brick of it. It's like, here, eat this frosting. You want bread stuff? Go ahead. I really do. <laughs> Hello. Dawson's may be packed full of tourists in the summer, but this time of year, with no line at their walk-up counter, it felt like an old-fashioned drugstore candy counter. They're definitely more on the tourist end, but just barely. Mm. Hey, you want to try a piece of this? Uh-huh. What's that chocolate? Fudge. More fudge? Nope, that was it. <laughs> That was the last bite, sorry. All right, we have finished our ice cream and fudge, and now we're gonna go do a little all access tour. And sarcasm is like a second language to me, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> Where we go to all of the beach accesses in Seaside and check them all out. So we're gonna do an all access tour of the beach accesses in Seaside and show you all of the accesses that there are. Sarcasm is anger's ugly cousin. From now on, unacceptable. So this should be fun. Oh look, private. Oh look, this one's private too. What do you know? That one's private too. Great day. <laughs> Great day. Great day. <laughs> yeah, let, let's help. Let's hope Hammy can get down. Hang on, Ham. I'm coming. I got you. Hey, stop. Okay. Maybe. I love you. She don't make it worse. I love you. I'm Kimmy, okay. I got it. I got it now. <laughs> 